Professor Dave and Chegg here. The main factor that influences reaction rates is the concentration of each reactant. We can describe the relationship between a reaction rate and the concentration of its reactants by using something called a rate law. It will be important for us to be able to derive these for any given system. But before we get to that, let's first make sure we understand precisely what these are. A rate law will take this general form, where the rate will be equal to a rate constant K times the product of the molar concentrations of the reactants, each raised to a particular exponent. These exponents are almost always positive integers, though it is technically possible for them to be fractions or negative numbers, and they are not evident from looking at the stoichiometry of the reaction. Let us state that one more time for emphasis, as this is an extremely common error among students. The exponents that we see here in the rate law are not related to and not necessarily equivalent to the stoichiometric coefficients from a balanced equation. Instead, these exponents must be determined experimentally. The rate constant is independent of these concentrations, but it does depend on other parameters like temperature and surface area. The exponents in the rate law tell us something called the reaction order. For a reaction with two reactants, the rate law would look like this. If m is 1, we would say the reaction is first order with respect to a. If n is 1, it is first order with respect to b. If n is 2, it would be second order in b. If it was 0, we would say it was zero order in b. The overall reaction order is simply the sum of the individual reaction orders. So if m and n are both 1, the overall reaction order is 2, since 1 plus 1 equals 2. Here are some examples of rate loss with the reaction orders listed. Let's make sure we can write these, as they will be important in our study of kinetics. Say we are examining the reaction of nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide to form nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. If we acquire kinetic data and find that the reaction is second order in NO2 and zero order in CO, what will be the rate law for this reaction? Well, in the rate law, each concentration will be raised to a certain power equal to the reaction order for that reactant. So given the data we collected, the concentration of NO2 will be raised to the second power, and the concentration of CO will be raised to the zero power, which makes it equal to one. It can therefore drop out of the rate law, and we will see that the rate law for this reaction will simply involve the NO2 concentration squared. Let's try one more. For this reaction, the rate law is as follows. What is the reaction order with respect to each reactant, and what is the overall reaction order? We can see from the exponents that this reaction is second order in NO, because of the 2, and first order in H2, because if no exponent is listed, it's the same as an exponent of 1. And the reaction is therefore third order overall, since 2 plus 1 equals 3. This may all seem pretty confusing, but for now, we simply need to focus on these definitions, as we will soon put them to good use when we derive reaction orders experimentally, which will make this whole concept much more clear. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time. <laughs>